I'm here with Nick de Broer, Head of Welfare and Veterinary Surgeon at Red Wings Horse Sanctuary, to ask him some questions about using blood tests as part of a strangle screening programme. So Nick, why are so many yard managers asking new horses to have a strangles blood test? Well, it indicates that these yards are serious about horse health and are taking a proactive approach against infectious disease. So what does a blood test actually tell us? It measures antibodies against strangles, which the horse's immune system will produce in response to being exposed to the strangles bacteria. And it can give us an indication of how many antibodies they've got. So whilst it doesn't actually find evidence of the strangles infection itself on a blood test, it will give us an idea because of how the horse's immunity responds to being exposed to strangles. So if my horse has antibodies, does that mean he has strangles? Not necessarily. So the blood test is incredibly valuable, but it doesn't always give us a simple yes or no answer. A horse can have antibodies against strangles in a number of situations. The most obvious reason would be that a horse is brewing or has a current infection of strangles, but there's a couple of other situations, such as the horse being a carrier, the fact that the horse might have had strangles in the last six to eight months because that's how long the antibodies will last for in the bloodstream. It could also mean that the horse has had strangles earlier in its life and has a background immunity but only produces antibodies when it comes into contact with strangles again. So it could mean that your horse has been exposed to strangles in the recent past. And in rare occasions when horses suffer from bastard strangles, they will also probably have a positive blood test. The current vaccines can also give us a positive blood test. And so you'd want to compare that with a vaccination certificate. But there is uh, the hope that future generations of vaccines will actually give us a ability to tell the difference on a blood test from a vaccinated horse and a natural infection. Okay, is there any way we can narrow down those options so we can find out what's actually going on in a particular horse? A single blood result is really just the starting point and we need more information to tell us in which direction the horse is heading. So if we take a second blood test at least two weeks later we can then work out whether the antibody levels are going up, staying the same or declining. If we combine this with keeping the horse in quarantine or isolation for that entire period while it's being tested, we can then be confident that any second result isn't linked to fresh exposure to infection. So that then tells us what's going on with the horse. Mm -hmm. So rising antibodies is an indication that the horse is mounting an immune response to recent infection. Falling antibodies would be generally a good sign, but just remember that just after being infected with strangles, horses are still highly contagious. So it might still be that although your horse is in the recovery phase, that it is still contagious to other horses. If the antibody levels have dropped, but not to a level that's considered safe, you may then need to consider whether you wait another two weeks to repeat the blood sample to see if it's continued to improve, or it might be that you choose to take a guttural pouch endoscopy test, which will give you a more conclusive answer sooner. What about consistent levels? Consistently high blood results in a outwardly healthy horse should give us uh, concern that the horse might be a carrier or could have developed bastard strangles. And the next best step would be to get the horse tested with guttural pouch endoscopy, which can confirm or deny whether the horse is a carrier. And if it is a carrier, you can actually also start treatment immediately. Okay. Steady but low or moderate antibody levels can be the most frustrating and difficult to interpret. It could be that the horse is a carrier but just has a very low level of live bacteria left. It could also be that the horse has got a compromised immune system, such as some of the horses we rescue at Red Wings. So one option again would be to wait a further two weeks and take another blood sample and see whether the antibody levels have declined. But it again might be more sensible to get the horse tested with guttural pouch endoscopy because again, you will know one way or the other at that point whether you're dealing with something that needs treatment like a carrier or whether you can relax quarantine. But if my horse has a negative blood test, then I don't need to worry, is that right? A negative blood test is a great start, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no risk. Remember that if a horse is infected with strangles recently, it can take up to two weeks for the immunity to develop enough antibodies for us to be able to measure. So one way of dealing with this is to keep the horse in isolation and to take two blood tests two weeks apart and compare the results. This is what we call a paired test and if both the results are low or negative that gives us confidence that the horse is not a risk. Okay, 
So would you recommend that every yard blood tests new horses? I would recommend that every yard has a screening program for new horses. And by that I mean isolation and temperature checking to detect any horses that might be incubating the infection but already potentially contagious to other horses, as well as the blood testing to try and detect those horses that are outwardly healthy but might be recently recovered but still highly contagious, or perhaps most importantly for detecting carriers. By combining those two elements you have a very robust screening program. So remember that up to 10% of horses that have had strangles can go on to become carriers if not tested after they've recovered. And we believe that outwardly healthy looking horses that are infectious, and most of those will be carriers, are probably the main reason why strangles spread so effectively through a horse population. But once you've detected that a horse is a carrier, it's actually quite straightforward to treat them so that the horse can carry on living a perfectly happy, normal life, mixing with other horses once it's been treated. So blood tests sound quite complicated but incredibly useful, is that right? Yes. Blood tests can play a vital part in protecting yards from a strangles outbreak. But they're at their most useful when horse owners, yard owners and vets work together to provide the vets with as much information about the horse as possible in order to help the vets interpret the blood test results. OK. Thank you so much, Nick. It has been fascinating. Would I be right in thinking that you would recommend any horse owners or yard managers, anyone that wants some more information, to contact their own vet for further advice? Yes, absolutely, because your vet can give you advice that's related specifically to your facilities, activities and circumstances.